Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna draw a samurai. A guy with a sword. It's for my client. I did him a geisha already. And I did a dragon and a tiger. So the samurai is gonna go on inner arm, which means we have a long length, long shape design. Geisha, we did here already. The dragon sits there and the tiger is about here. So we have all this area. What we need to do is if we need to finish a design which is finished but unfinished at the same time because that will allow us to join to the previous ones we have done already. Make sense? A design is from AI. I think it's AI, I'm not really sure but it looks like AI. We will do in Neo Trad, so it's gonna be we're gonna do in Neo Japanese. It's gonna be Neo Trad, but in Japanese version, so Neo Japanese. It's a style that recently myself I discovered. It's quite a new style. It literally has the same elements as in Neo Trad, as in bold lines, nice shading, lots of blacks, clean, precise, and readability. Let's get going. So we open Procreate, press plus, pick a size which you wanna. I already made, and it's that one. We open a fresh new page the key, add or insert photo and it's somewhere, let's find it, where is it, that guy, it's a small image, I didn't expect that coming, but basically did. What I'm looking for an image is when when I'm designing whatever that is, the word or the, the thing needs to be as I want it to be. What I mean is, the person as a samurai needs to look like a samurai. A guy who has a sword, the guy who has suffered, the guy who's been through training, the guy who has been... who's a problem, and he has problems. He solves problems and he creates problems. He, he is the guy who chops people's heads off. Like, he is, he does that, that's, that's his job, or his passion, or choice. So, whenever I design, wherever I design, I look for the, the image what explains the right information as in like you can't pick a guy with a sword and call them samurai or the king or the warrior it's just a dude with a sword you know what i mean like it's just like a neighbor kid with a sword you can't call them warrior or can't, can't call them like samurai you need to well at least i do and I, I would suggest for you as well as in pick an image what explains exactly what you're drawing so if, if you draw a samurai, you get it. If you draw a geisha, you look you look somebody and you're like, damn. You know what I mean? Like it needs to be like, damn, she's the one. She's one that people adore, the people wanna be as, the girls wanna be as, and the guys get jealous that you have that girl. And the girl has like a cue behind it. And if the face doesn't represent that or doesn't show that, don't do it. Well I, I would suggest not to do it. Because you, like, it, it doesn't scream that, that spice, that face, that, like, one, the client itself, he, he wants, like, the best tattoo on his arm, so he doesn't want any other girl, like, he probably has some classmates, some girls' classmates, and he doesn't want any random girl's face on his arm, he wants that face on his arm, like, mint one, and then, when he wants like a samurai or a strong character, he needs to be a strong character. Somebody where you look at an image and you're like, heads off, like you'll die. You piss him off, your, your head's flying in a bin, in the trash can, done. Like, those are the photos I go for where the word clearly explains the image and the image clearly explains the word. That makes sense. When you look for a king, you go for the king king. If you look for the queen, you look for the queen, not for girl with a crown, the queen. And it's always been my go-to and it's always a struggle to find that photo, that face, whatever that is, I'm really particular on that image. And when you find the image, you know it's the right one. So let's go lining. So first we desaturate this because we need like make some markings. Now we're gonna mark the area that we need to keep into it. So this is like where you behave yourself. You try not to go overboard because that this area itself gonna go into a new tattoo, which is gonna be his previous tattoo, and it has few lines there. I kind of 
it'll be like this. So this, this is the tool, this new one needs to slide on the, underneath that one and it's gonna have lines like this. So but try to keep yourself in that frame as in inner arm. So you don't wanna go like too far, but all you see is this much and you physically cannot see the other image because that goes into like way too far. And when you say a samurai and all you see is the dudes like front, you can't see the behind. It doesn't really say the samurai, it says part of a samurai. Like, it's not fully readable image. So we need to beha behave ourselves. So now we create a new layer, we go for the black and I will not gonna use every single line what's here. I'm gonna use the lines I like and there'll be parts like here where you need to make your stuff up yourself because the light physically doesn't make sense and loads of stuff just is unnecessary here. So let's start lining. Before we line it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this character samurai over the black from thin lines to bold lines all that finish it then we're gonna desaturate that and then we're gonna add another layer on top of it we're gonna sketch where the wind will go wind bars and all this the additional elements what we're gonna do on top of it but once first of all we're gonna create line work for this throughout the whole thing and then we're gonna draw on top of it and which allows us to delete from this wherever we don't need Make sense? So get this ready, then we draw the new one and then we know what to delete. Yeah? Down. So far, so good, we're happy where we are. So what we need to do now is, so basically that is the armpit area. That's gonna be the dragon's head, it's about here. The geisha is underneath there and she has some spikes where it needs to go. What I'm gonna do in a day is, I'm gonna bring these lines more further down until it merges and touches geisha. So we don't really need to do much here because that will be till the end of her. So he's gonna touch her down here is gonna be the dragon's head and he has some wind bars. So I'm not gonna really do anything much here. I might do some little bits here, just so I fulfill the area. Cause I feel like that area does not need to do anything unless it's me on a day. And then I'm then I'm making decisions once I've stenciled, then I can see where the previous lines line, how far they are, what close they are, how much gap I have, then I can make a decision. Now making decisions, I think it's pointless. It's gonna be quite a small design, well, as in inner arm only, and then we're not gonna go full inside the armpit, which means the armpit is gonna be probably there, which means it gives a gap there about 20%, and you lose quite a lot. And then the, this will be the, the bend where arm bends and the geisha. So the design is really, well, it's gonna be quite smallish, and we shouldn't really get carried away with millions of little details because we physically won't be able to execute them. What we need to do now, and what I need to do now, is focus on that area, get some live wind bars in, get some, maybe even cherry blossoms here and there, um, some little decorations basically, fulfill that area. 
I'm really big fan of overlapping so I'm probably gonna overlap one or two flowers here so again this area is gonna go beyond the arm so the arm is like circular you're gonna cover that area as in I don't know how to explain it yeah the, the upper area so this area here physically the, the behind of that is gonna be the inner arms inner section so it goes beyond uh, visual aspect so it's gonna be really hard one to get to second to the two so you can take easy approach and do it till the edge so basically till the edge of the arm where you can nicely reach still that will be approximately there so till there do the important areas or some sort of important elements once it goes beyond just don't do anything that's where the other design the dragon is from the other side and so the dragon goes from like there to there and then that could be introduced that way rather than pushing this that way makes sense so let's add some additional sketches what, what i'm gonna do is that means a new layer we take it the i always sketch with the red just like it and play around see what it looks like then we're gonna desaturate the layer we're gonna pull some clean lines on another new layer so but before we get that let's do this yeah so we have the layer of the line drawing now we just made a new one which is gonna be our sketch uh, for additions layer and we'll see what we're gonna do then but first let's sketch it I would say when it comes to big designs it's really important to keep small little elements and little key features visible to the human eye for instance one of them is the start or finish of this so basically that little triangle or the little corner but that is the only thing what explains that that's where the arm is that's where the i don't know, don't know what's the name for it but that's where basically the sword goes in the holder I don't know that separates from that so that's a really high key feature second elbow like wind bar cannot destroy elbow it needs to be visible it needs to see the, the, the either even you and the person needs to see where is the joint of the arm and it's that now you can't pull that over makes sense and second of all there's loads of like little separations there because that's the only thing what explains where what starts and what finishes it's really important to not lose them whatsoever i can't think of now what else i made there but there was a few little things where i was i was looking at it and i was like let's not lose that we can't afford to lose that even that little small triangle it's just if that it's not there you can't see it, it's it kind of shows you where the end is but it doesn't but once you put these in these little ones just nicely crisps the uh, same like here ah this is one of the features as well so when this wind bar goes in so these these basically will be empty so these lines will be going to delete and the wind bars will be empty white lines where it's going to go so I, may, I pulled it over this katana holder so you can see this bottom line but then i pulled low enough that you can see the line again and then i twist it over just before the elbow starts and twist it around so it gives that dynamic feeling that it goes it moves and the lines are like twisting moving but it goes forward as the guy is going forward and and you know it's up to no good like it's 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 a it's a, a photo what moves it gives a traction it gives a story it gives a movement and then this is kind of it's like it tells you it's up to no good but there's a twist in the story it makes sense and i kind of still stole these from chicano i've done loads of chicano in my life that these wind bars i always take from chicano i just love it i think they have the best wind bars and 
sorry Japanese guys, but I think that outperforms that. I know it's not really Japanese Japanese, it's near Japanese, but still, I prefer these over the traditional ones because it's more dynamic, it gives more power, there's lots of movement and it just looks cool about us and it always sells. When you show this to a client or if you would just make a standard boring ones, he would pick this because it just gives more story, more cooler, more dynamic, more that and he knows that he can show off to his friends and his friends are gonna say exactly the same. So not a lot of times when you tattoo the person, you actually tattoo the people afterwards is if, if that makes sense because they sometimes have a tattoo but what they value more is what other people will say which means it's like you to seeing the other people you to seeing the thousand more and the thousand more will be the ones what will indicate if this is a good or a bad tattoo because he has no like uh power to judge himself or to agree himself that he if he likes or not but it all, de it all depends on what other people are gonna say. So in a sense of like, you are the doing for the other people, because other people will make him happy if the design is cool and other fe people think that way. I know it's like a big crazy story, but I hope it does make sense because it's just the reality of the two life and the two world that people really, really highly value other people's opinion over what they have. It's just the way it is. So. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna clean up a little bit. So I'm gonna desaturate the black lines, get them like there-ish. No. What we're gonna do first is I will desaturate that, and I will do desaturate these. Basically, I'm gonna drop that wind bar layer because I drew them on a separate layer. I'm gonna merge down to the red one. So we got now wind bars and the flowers on one. We're gonna desaturate that as well. So we can see, but we can't see. Then we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna take a brush, technical. We're gonna take stabilization. We will increase that to about 90 here and about that. So what this does is, this kinda adjusts the front of the brush. This adjusts the back of the brush, see? You can't really make a, a mistake. The back is controlled for you. And if you max that out, there's, you, you just can't do much. If you take the back out, it kind of gives you a little bit more variation. And then I've never tried that. Yeah, it's still, the back is controlled so good. Even the front is misbehaving. The back end will be cleaned up. So yeah. Back of the brush, front of the brush. If you keep that there, and that about there, that's all we need. And then that allows you to make really nice, clean, precise lines. Effortlessly. Easy as that. Do you know what this means? A time-lapse video, we're gonna go through these lines, and then we're gonna delete the samurai lines. So, let's go. This is the moment we take eraser, we go to the layer where we have all the line works for the samurai, and we delete the stuff while wind bars overlap. Mostly I desaturate that layer, but now we happen to have saturated, unsaturated layer, so it's all done already. So we just need to go and delete and delete and delete and delete and get basically get rid of everything while the wind bars cover. Then, don't forget the, the areas where the flower goes over, that also needs to be erased. So this is the moment where we clean up. And then the layer where we did the sketching for the
flowers, we can get rid of it, we can permanently delete that so it doesn't get involved and you accidentally don't draw on it or you know what I mean, like you can get like quite messy. Guys, let's clean it up and let's delete the lines we physically don't need. Whatever you believe you've done already, I would suggest highly to go over and do like a final inspection because what you don't want to do is when you go back here and you select the, the layer fully and now it goes fully and then you miss the area which you don't need but then you didn't notice that. Then tomorrow comes, you make a stencil, you outline it and you accidentally line the lines you shouldn't line what are you gonna do but if you do final inspection now you can prevent that from happening i've had that before where i've pulled one or two lines it was innocent lines like those lines could be there and could not be there it made no difference and that person still doesn't notice that but i've, I've lined a few lines that i shouldn't line just because i didn't delete them i physically didn't delete them so that taught me to do a full inspection to go through check every line every area where it could possibly be and it could cause you an issue what well, i believe so we have we, we have finished it's all done see like yeah i didn't notice that i, I wouldn't line tomorrow I, I, I would realize and i would notice that but it's so easy to like miss a line and then tomorrow when the sensor looks like this and you just follow the lines thinking nothing of it but then you realize oh i didn't really need that line what are we gonna do now when it's busy like this you wouldn't even notice like the client would notice you would notice it's all cool but like yeah it could be an area where like here these lines i don't know what those are those are probably the lines from me moving basically the image around i best i made some and it's that easy it's easy to like take the line for granted because when we use the tool we focus on 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 small line at the time so you only do that and then you do this and you do this and you do this and only when you step back and you will take like a glimpse of overall and you're like oh then you can see all oh, then you can notice but as we the two we only focus on one small area at a time that line that line that line we just do section by section so I believe it's done I don't think we need to do anything else. What we're gonna do tomorrow is once we size up what we need, we put the stencil on him and then then we can see how much gaps we have, where they are, what can we do with them. Wind bars you can always add. I, uh, I've done some like clouds. If you see my Instagram you you know what I'm talking about. Those Japanese clouds, I've done loads of him. So I can freehand them on him. I can add some more flowers, wind bars. Just the shading itself, just like blank grey shading, of, uh, separating that plus that, shading in between. A lot of things can be done, but now we're not going to do anything of that. We're going to stencil that and then we'll see tomorrow how it looks like, how big it needs to be and all the decisions we're going to make it then. If I'll be able to film it, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'll see tomorrow. But thank you for watching and I hope you did learn a little bit. Thank you and... See you on the next video. Have I told you that we are opening a tattoo school where we're going to teach people all I know? If you're interested, leave a message in comments.